Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the RS3 Iron Man series. In the last episode, we did a bunch of quests. We got a bunch of quests out of the way, like Monkey Madness, among other things. A bunch of kind of miscellaneous things. Uh, but today, we have a Dagonoth King's Reaper, and I'm pretty excited to go try to kill some da Dagonoth Rex. Uh, a Dragon Axe would be really, really nice, um, among other things. And also, I am up to 66 fishing now, which, uh, as you know, you need 68 to access uh, the fishing guild and deep sea fishing. But, um, I mean, maybe this, maybe RS3 is going to disappoint me again like it did last episode when I found out I couldn't boost for Fairy Tale Part 2. But I'm pretty sure you can boost to access the fishing guild. And I found out that I can make a fishing potion pretty easily. Uh, and I think I have the things to do it. So I'm going to try to make a fishing potion and go check out the traveling merchant. Um, looking at the stock for today, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly interesting, but there is a Dragonkin lamp for 250k, and, uh, well, that's just free XP, or really cheap XP, rather. Um, and also, before we do DKs, um, I want to go do some player-owned farm updates, uh, thanks to a commenter on my last video. I'm a little bit more informed on some things I should be doing for that and for beans, so I'm going to go do that as well and try to crank out the beans and unlock the trapper so uh yeah let's get started should be an interesting episode i'm still probably going to get to some questing later on um i still just have a lot of quests that i need to do but i'm going to break things up a little bit and we're going to have a, a, a little bit more variety in this episode so i hope you guys enjoy there is three fishing potions so uh with those let's go see if we can check out the deep sea fishing all right, so I am waiting to get into the Whirlpool Whirlpool D and D FC. I thought Jagex changed it so that you could have up to five. Well, apparently it does, but it says it's still full, so it's a pretty popular thing apparently to find the traveling merchant. Uh, but I want to talk about player-owned farms for a little bit because, uh, yeah, somebody in my comments. Uh, let me grab their name real quick. Shout out to where is it? Danny Williams for the tips on player owned farms. Basically, he was telling me that uh, the the medium pen upgrade that I was going for that allows them to breed in medium pens is kind of overrated and that I should just beeline for the trapper. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. And also he mentioned that I didn't realize this, but sheep are 30 beans each. Also, chicken eggs are 25. I think this is probably the better route. Uh, but sheep are 30 beans each. So what I can do is I can just buy them and breed them up and uh yeah if i if i buy them and breed them or not breed them excuse me i'm already breeding them but if i just raise them even if they go all the way to maturity to like elder which is less than ideal like ideally you want to sell them at adolescent but even if they don't um i can still sell them for a profit at elder so i can use my breeding pen for breeding and i can still profit beans from just raising sheep uh, so I'm going to be doing that for sure. Um, so let's go through these in the medium pen over here. Uh, these, why can't, uh, that's weird. Why won't it let me, oh, I have to check them first. Okay. There we go. I, I don't know if male or female matters. These are all females, but, uh, yeah, we can throw these in here and, uh, yeah, with, I should profit beans no matter what. And also I'll feed them up so that they get healthy because I have like literally like 10,000 of this honeycomb. Um, yeah, and I'll try to to make sure to stop them at adolescent. Um, but, uh, you know, I get busy and sometimes I forget about it. Um, but yeah, getting in the trapper is going to be really nice. Um, he also told me that I really want to get chinchampas. Uh, so I was thinking that I should get up my hunter to go farm chinchampas, but he said that that's pretty uh, unlikely, like that you're going to get them. And the best way is to get them from the trapper, since they're pretty common from the trapper. Uh, so another reason to get the trapper unlocked. Um, and uh, chinchampas are pretty cool. I was doing some research, because uh, they actually give you chinchampas, like the throwable range weapons, as a, as a product. Which will be really nice, so if we want to do some uh, abyss range training or something, then, then we can do that. Um, as well as giving a bunch of beans and farming XP and whatnot. So, uh, so yeah, that's the plan with the traveling with the player owned farm right now. Um, just trying to farm up beans so I can get the trapper and then expand from there and uh, you know get more and more biodiversity in here. You know, uh, breeding the cows and everything. 
So I'm still trying to get into the Whirlpool D&D FC, but I said my dailies and we got a gift of the Reaper for today. So that is awesome. 233 Reaper points we're up to. So uh, maybe after this DK's task, we can unlock the, uh, uh, what you might call it, uh, uh, the Reaper's choice that allows us to choose some tasks. Um, so I think that's still going to be good to go for. Everyone's been telling me to save up Hydrixes and whatnot, and I will do that. Uh, but I think the Reaper's Choice is going to help us, uh, you know, get more points in the in the long run. Uh, so I think that'll be good to have, uh, especially since like I could really use a Krosis Reaper. I know I was complaining about that a few episodes ago, like constantly doing them. But uh, but yeah, those supplies would be really nice, and I haven't done one in a while, and they're the best points that I can do right now. All right, I still haven't been able to join the FC yet to find a traveling merchant, but uh, let's go check out the deep sea fishing and see what that's all about. The fishing potion did work for me. Um, I'm talking to this guy. I'm not sure if this is the... No, this guy is for des Deadliest Catch, right? Wait, can I do this quest? This is a lot of dialogue. Uh, but I got to figure out where the deep sea fishing boat or whatever is. Oh, this guy. I think this is the one I got to talk to. 67 hunter 70 fishing 70 thieving no i can't do that uh, but it does give a bunch of fishing xp but yeah let's go to the uh in deep sea fishing and check this out so i believe the traveling merchant it spawns right over here when when it does come at least for the worlds that it's on i'm keeping my eye on the discord for deep sea fishing as well uh, i'm not seeing anything yet since i can't join the fc because it's full i can't believe that they they pumped it up to 500 and it's already full. That's insane. Uh, but from what I've heard, this this other stuff is pretty cool. Like these uh, green blubber jellyfishes. Okay, I need 68 for those. And then the blue ones are the better ones, right? 91 fishing. Wow. Okay, but these fish are pretty cool because you can eat them without uh, draining your ad adrenaline. So you can just spam them. Uh, but the other thing that's cool about this... Well, there's some other like D&Ds and things that give you like... Uh, you know, I don't know. There, there's a bunch of like kind of uh, events that happen. I think that's what that FC is based around. <laughs> okay, I guess it just kicks you out as soon as your fishing level drops below 68. That's interesting. Okay, so this will be good for uh, basically just the daily, but I still need to get my my fishing level up. That's interesting. I didn't think that would happen. Uh, but anyways, if we can find the world, we can go do that. Uh, you know, that should be plenty enough time for us to uh, to just go buy what we need from the traveling merchant. But what I was saying is that swarm fishing thing is that allows you to fish and you catch a variety of different fish. And the fish you catch depends on your, your fishing level. Uh, but you can catch anything like uh, any fish at any level. So it's kind of like the ZMI altar of fishing, to be honest, if if that makes sense. So that would be really cool for us to uh, get some high-level food. But also, I think some of these raw high-level fish are required for uh, Big Game Hunter in some way. So that might be a good way to start stacking some of those up. Um, but also, if we get that relic from, uh, from archaeology at level, I think, 99 archaeology, we can do that with pretty low fishing, pretty low cooking. And, uh, you know, get a bunch of high-level food and a bunch of cooking XP as well um, without even having the requirement. Uh, but if I look up here, I still, like, once I get to 68, I'm going to put a pause on fishing for a while. I have quite a bit of desert souls and catfish. Um, these should hold me over for quite a bit. Um, you know, once I get to, I'm almost at 67, so basically one more level. And, uh, yeah, that should hold me over for quite a bit. So, since I can't get in here, I'll, I'll try this again later. Uh, but let's go do our DK's task. Um, I think with the instances and stuff, I should be able to get to the safe spot pretty easily in RS3. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. There we go. That is our deep, our DK's Reaper out of the way. Uh, nothing special this task. We did, however, get a... Uh, I, I took two trips... Um, we did, however, get a rock shell helm, which is a new best in slot melee helm for us, actually. Uh, but yeah, 10k Slayer XP, 14 Reaper points. That brings us up to, I think we're just shy of that unlock we want, the uh, Reaper's Choice. There we are. Two, oh my god, we're three points short. So tomorrow we can go get that, and from now on we'll be able to, we'll be able to have a potential 
a chance of having a choice for a Reaper assignment, which I think is going to add up nicely over time. We can pick some good ones, you know, get get some good points over time. Okay, so I can feed them flowers, so that's good. And actually, these two random cows that I got, I have really good perks on. Uh, Viral, higher breeding chance, and sparkling, which is, uh, I believe that gives it uh, a chance of getting the Harlequin cow, which is the like a shiny one it's a higher chance and also it's it's worth more beans um let me know if that's worth keeping it in my breeding pair or if i should just sell it once it grows up for the for extra beans um but uh this guy the virile helping it breed more is gonna be nice i need a chocolate vanilla and strawberry cow or a shiny cow for um for the the archaeology thing so this is really cool i didn't realize that you could you know make beans or make a bean profit from just raising animals i thought that breeding was pretty much the only way to do that uh so yeah that's gonna be really nice it's gonna be able to get me that's gonna allow me to farm up uh beans a lot faster you know boom i finally got it i got my dragonkin lamp i don't think it's really worth buying shattered anima i mean maybe maybe when i have a better way of farming gp but it's kind of a lot of gp um, and I believe once I get up there, I can farm it pretty quickly. Um, and if I gift off offerings, there's some good things I could get from that. You know what? Screw it. Let's buy one. I don't think it's really worth it, but, uh, okay. That definitely wasn't worth it. I got a hundred and something K back. So basically it cost me like maybe 150, 200 K for a palm sapling, but dragon Kim lamp is, oh, it tells you exactly right there. Eight. 1,774 Herblore XP, which I think is what I'd put this on. Yeah, I'd say that definitely makes sense. So something I'd like to get out of the way before we start questing again is I'd like to unlock the Tuska's Wrath ability. Uh, I think they nerfed this actually when I used to play. I thought this was 12,000 that you needed, so uh, I don't think this should take this long or that long, but also this minigame should give me some XP. Uh, there's other abilities you can unlock here, but I can, I'm can i going to get these eventually from doing God Wars and whatnot anyways, and they're not particularly useful to me right now, so I don't think it's really worth my time to, to go for these. But just through camping Armadillo and Bandos, I'm going to eventually get these anyways, uh, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to try this out and uh, crank out Tuska's Wrath, because this is the only place you can get it, and once we start to get into Slayer, uh, it's going to be really necessary. Um, but also it just it gives me some XP so might as well All right, I did one run that took I got a thousand so I need to do that four times and that took me maybe 25 minutes or so 20 minutes, so we're looking at maybe an hour hour and a half two hours tops to get Tuska's wrath That's really not too bad to be honest um, I thought like I remember this taking a lot longer because I think again you needed to do 12,000 before or something like that so yeah taking an hour and a half or so is really not too bad uh, I'm not gonna do another one right now because I need to hit my cash I still haven't done any caches yet today so I'm gonna wait for that and uh, but I'll come back to this 57 divination 58 divination we got two caches back to back just because I went and go grab some lunch after that other one and came back just in time to it's nice to get those both out of the way. I got to remember to keep doing that more often because, uh, yeah, actually doing this thing kind of sucks. So that took exactly one hour and 20 minutes since, uh, wait, where'd the guy go? Here he is. Uh, because the, the rounds are exactly 20 minutes and they give we 1,000 points. So now I can unlock the Tuska's Wrath ability. Um, again, these other ones, honestly, these like devotion is probably the most useful out of all of these in the grand scheme of things, but it's not very useful to me right now. And I think I'm going to get it passively through doing God Wars anyways. So I don't think it's really worth my time. Um, but Tuska's Wrath, if you don't, or if you aren't aware, um, it's a normal, like mediocre basic. Actually, I think it's pretty weak. I think it's on like similar to, it's barely stronger than Rack. Uh, but when you're on Slayer task, uh, it deals $10,000, 10,000% of your Slayer level as damage to your active Slayer target. So at my level at 56 Slayer, that would be just an instant 5,600 damage from a basic ability. And then obviously if you're up to 120 Slayer, then that's just an instant 12k. Uh, it doesn't work against bosses and stuff like that, but basically when you get to higher Slayer levels, it allows you to just like one shot one Slayer creature every like 
what is it, 90 seconds or something like that as a cooldown. Uh, 15 seconds cooldown. It doesn't say. Okay. Oh, 120 seconds if used. So, like, every two minutes you can just one-shot one of your Slayer creatures, which is just, you know, really nice. So, that's cool to just get out of the way. It's not very useful to us right now. Uh, but also, we got a couple levels. We got a Divination level, actually. We got, like, 8 10k Divination XP. Uh, we got 52 Fire Making from 50. Uh, we need 51 for As a First Resort, which is a quest I'd like to do really soon. So, that's nice. Um, and I think we got a Construction level or something. But, uh, and just kind of some miscellaneous XP. So, really wasn't too bad. And it's nice to get these things out of the way when... Uh, you know, we're still in the early game. When you get to the late game, it's just kind of a waste of time, you know. That is 56 woodcutting. I've been chilling out here for a bit, trying out these Acadias, and I am glad they did. They, it, I have all the levels for Fremnic Isles now, apparently. Um, I also need 56 for another quest, I believe. I don't know. Uh, that's But that's why I was going for 56, actually. Maybe it was just Fremnic Isles. I don't remember. I mean, there's so many quests in this game. Uh, but this is so much faster than cutting willows or something. Like these, I think, for mid-level woodcutting are are really, really awesome because I don't know. They, it just feels like it's way faster than anything else, like willows or maples or anything. So something I've been putting off for far too long is unlocking miscellanea, which is what I'm gonna go do right now. Now, initially when I first started, I didn't think that miscellanea was really particularly useful in RS3. Uh, but then I was looking into it and I realized that I need a lot of the maple logs uh, for simple parts um, for making uh, divine charges and whatnot once I get to invention. Um, as well as the teak logs I think are pretty good for uh, for construction. I think those are probably my best options based on the research that I've done. As well as the maples are going to be really good early game for like fletching and stuff. Getting my fletching up early game. Um, you know maybe a little bit more fire making up in the early game to like say 60, 70, something like that. Uh, so that's gonna be something that I probably should have done a long time ago, but I'm doing it now. That is Throne of Miscellanea complete, and we are gonna do, well, once this dialogue's over at least, and we are gonna go do Royal Trouble right away. Once Mr. Uh, Yeti guy over here is done talking, that should be Royal Trouble complete, which uh, this quest actually gives us some XP, which is nice. Um, but the most important thing is that that allows us to get full access to the Kingdom of Miscellanea. Wow, this is some long dialogue. Jeez, messing up my timing here. Jagex, thanks. There we go. Um, but most importantly, so I already put in 5 mil over here with, uh, with uh, Mr. Grimm. Oh, I can put it up to 7 mil. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm broke. I'm down to 3 mil. Um, but, so I already put full workers into wood. I think the uh, the best thing to do with the other ones is to put them into teaks. Um, or maybe both for a little bit just so that I get a little bit of mahogany just for the rent. Not because, um, I think in the long term teaks is probably the most uh, efficient. But you just need some mahogany planks and I don't have access to a lot of them right now. Um, but I think hardwood is the best option. So I think I'll, I'll do this for a week or so. Um, maybe herbs is worth it as well. Uh, I'm not sure. But the big thing we're looking for is the, the maple logs for simple parts. And then these for construction. Um, again, I'm mostly going to do teaks. But I'm going to let it go on both for a week or so. So that I can get some extra mahogany logs. Because mahogany logs are just kind of a pain for me to obtain right now. Um, and maybe I'll switch it up in the future, but I'm going to let this go for about a week, I think, and, uh, come back and check it and check it out, see how it's doing. So we are back for another traveling merchant and more shattered anima. I'm not interested in that, but what I am interested in, in is this monthly D and D token that is always worth it. I don't care how poor I am. Um, but that is great. I already used one on, uh, a troll invasion or I thought I Okay. Apparently, you can use it on Troll Invasion again. Uh, back when I used to play, you couldn't do that. You could only use one reset token uh, per DND per month, right? Uh, but I'm going to use one on Oyster this time just to switch things up. Um, and reset's coming up soon. Um, but uh, going forward, I'll probably still use the rest of them on Troll Invasion. I believe that's just better. It's just, you know, the XP is just flat out better, I think. Uh, but let's go do our Oyster. 
That is 67 fishing. Still needs 68, so I don't have to boost to get into that area anymore. That'll be really nice. Uh, but even after 68, for a while, the majority of my fishing will still probably be at Menaphos. But just having access to that is going to be really, really nice. Actually, the fishing XP from this monthly is really good. Um, it's just that fishing and farming are just really easy. You know, I, I, I'm going to use the resets for the most part on... Uh, on troll invasion just because it gives a ton of herb lore XP. It's just so much better and That is absolutely terrible. That's no there's no fortunate components in there lumberyard tele teleports would be kind of nice and old-school, but uh, in in uh, RS3 I have this thing with the uh, earth talisman in there, and I just use that um, But for some reason I didn't get my thing. Do I have to open it first? Okay, I have to open it before uh, collecting these things, but that's all right. We can get a new oyster in four days. It's almost a uh, monthly reset time. Why can't I? Oh, I just have to click feed. Okay, there we go. Yep, we'll come back in four days and see. Hopefully, have better luck. If I want to keep up with the traveling merchant as well as the shop runs I've been doing, I'm going to need to find a new source of cash and as well as keeping up with my Alks because, uh, yeah, the ED3 trash runs aren't a thing anymore. I still have a solid amount of Alks in my bank from the, the trash runs I did do before the nerf, uh, but, you know, I'm going to need a new source of cash. It's not going to last long. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Um, otherwise, May helps out, you know. Um, but besides that, I'm kind of at a loss for now. Um, Krosis gives a decent amount of cash, so maybe that's a good option. I, I'm, I'm not sure. All right, here's a quick XP dump for you. Crafting, cooking, and fishing XP, as well as we are going to turn it in a bunch of statue pieces. Um, and uh, just see what we get. It's kind of satisfying to be able to turn them all in all at once, but, you know, I could really use the XP in a lot of these skills. So, you know, smithing, crafting, for sure. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get any levels, actually, but... Okay, we got a smithing level after all that was done. Do I have any rocks left? No, okay. So, if we uh, fill this up, looks like we're missing room crafting, construction, and farming, and we can complete one statue. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to go for trim on this account, so I don't think it's really going to be relevant, but I'll be working on it here and there just because, you know... It's time gated and the efficiency thing of the efficiency bug in me tells me that I need to do it as soon as possible uh, But regardless, I'll take the XP cooking and uh, smithing level So I just read up and uh, looked into the new Zamorak update or uh, rather I think the news just came out recently about the rewards and uh, You know everything about the elite dungeon and it looks really sick and it's got me motivated to get into some higher level content and PVM and whatnot, which brings me to our next goal, which is the Lunar Diplomacy, which we talked about uh, a few episodes ago, I believe, but I kind of put it on the back burner because I knew I was going to have to train up crafting and mining. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go mine some gem rocks and craft them or cut them rather. Um, and I think that should get us up about the same time to, to the level that we need. For lunar diplomacy because lunar diplomacy is going to give me the best armor that uh that i'm going to have for quite some time probably until i get subjugation from zamorak um and it's going to enable us to probably go farm some of those god wars dungeon one bosses it's level 60 armor and it's also power armor so or it's tier 60 rather but you only need 40 defense to equip it it's kind of confusing um, but that is going to be really really great for us so let's go grind out some mining and some crafting and do the lunar diplomacy so what I'm going to be doing for a while is just uh, sitting at these uncommon gem rocks. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the gem bag upgrade, which uh, would allow me to hold slightly more gems um, because I just don't have the Dungeoneering tokens. But this is going to allow us to hold 100 in total. Uh, so we can make a trip of 127, right, in total, which really isn't too bad. And uh, I, I'm not sure what number of gems I'm going to go for before I start cutting them. Um, maybe I'll go for like... 2,000 sapphires or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If I get to 60 mining, then I'll probably stop too. But uh, we'll see. Um, what? Are you kidding me? I mean, I guess there goes like all my RNG for a while, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry if anybody's like super dry on this pet. What the hell? I've never been this like 
lucky on a skilling pet or anything before. Uh, not even on old school. Hold on, let's see if we can pull it up. Um, okay. These damn scorpions would get out of the way so I can take a look at this guy. <laughs> what the hell? You have got to be kidding me. Level 58 mining. What are the chances of that? Well, I have been here a while. And uh, I've just been sitting here AFKing, watching some YouTube, and also setting up a Discord server. So, yeah, I set up a Discord server for the channel. The link to that will be down in the description. So you should definitely come join and, and hang out. But we should be getting 60 mining, all from these gem rocks. This took a while. Um, but yeah, it's about to be done. That's our requirement for Lunar Diplomacy, as well as I am hoping that I have enough gem gems to get to 61 crafting. I think I do. I have a lot of gems. Um, it's, I really wasn't too far off with my estimates. We got about 1600 sapphires, 900 emeralds, and 650 rubies. So. Let's uh, let's get to cutting all of these, and uh, hopefully we'll get to 61 with all that, because I really don't want to go back. It's been <laughs> kind of just uh, sitting there for a few hours. There's 61 crafting. Actually, using up all my sapphires and emeralds got me up to like 60. So I'm going to finish cutting these, actually, just because I'm going to need it. Actually, on my list over here for, I believe, the branches of Dark Mare, I have 64 crafting. And crafting is just a really important skill in general. So I'll just finish cutting these real quick, and then we'll go do Lunar Diplomacy. All right, let's go do Lunar Diplomacy. Um, actually, after doing that, I cut all the dragon stones in my bank as well, and that got us up to 62 crafting, so not bad. Uh, fire battle stabs, actually, we could maybe do if we were able to get our hands on some fire orbs. At least in old school, a bunch of stuff drops fire orbs, so uh, you know maybe we can make those and get some alks too, as well as training some crafting. Shit, I need a fire talisman. I didn't think about that. Uh, okay, detour time. Well, that didn't take too long. We also picked up a nature talisman and a body talisman for our uh, Wicked Hood. I just went out and used melee. Thought I'd test out the old rune halberd out over in the abyss. And uh, yeah, we got our fire talisman. Didn't take too long at all. Uh, might go back there at some point. We got a couple of abyssal charms as well. Uh, we might go back there at some point to train up our melees. Unfortunately, though, I don't even have Hurricane unlocked on this guy yet. So I was just using Quake and Cleave. Uh, excuse me for the Discord notifications. I forgot to mute those. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I only have Quake and Cleave um, for now. Also, I was wearing my Amulet of Magic. Oops. But uh, but yeah, we'll probably do the Abyss for melee training now that. Uh, ED3 isn't a thing anymore, and hopefully when we can farm up some chins, we might do some low-level range training there as well. We'll see. Well, that was going really smoothly until the very end. Uh, the agility race thing, I failed like three times, and also I got super unlucky with the underground pass maze thing. I mean, like, look at this maze that I had, right? I got to the end of it like two or three times, and like failed the last jump or guessed the wrong one on the last jump like three times and it takes super long to get through it because the animation is super long but anyways that's 5k runecrafting xp which is really nice we got two runecrafting levels and also we get a new set of best gear for us like uh or it's best in slot for us right this moment um, the ring is the best I have because I don't have anything else. The lunar amulet is quite a bit better than the amulet of magic. Yeah, but this right here is going to be our best magic gear for a while. We add a bunch of damage through the magic bonuses. Like, that is really great. Uh, the god cape is still better than the, than the lunar cape. Um, and also I'm hoping to replace this ring and this amulet perhaps soon. Um, and obviously the vanquish is better. I'm not going to lose, use the lunar staff for anything other than like fairy rings, I guess. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll hang on to it. I suppose this I can get rid of. I don't need that at all. Yeah, but this was certainly a very productive episode. We got super lucky and got spooned the mining pet. Um, not my favorite pet in the world, but hey, we'll take it. We've been absolutely getting insane with the pet luck. I don't know if you remember a couple episodes ago, we got Spoon the Croesus pet at like 25 KC. Um, yeah, but we upgraded our armor. This is going to allow us to do a lot of things. It says level 40, but I'm told that this is actually like level 
60 power armor. So this is really powerful. Uh, basically, until we get subjugation. I know everyone has been talking about the Fremenic armor patches, and I can upgrade the Fremenic armor to level 65, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think that's worth it. This is level 60 power. Like, I think pretty soon, honestly, I think we can go grind out some Zami God Wars and maybe get some subjugation. So... Um, so yeah, I really don't think that that step is going to be necessary going out to grind like uh, Wildy Slayer and stuff like that. You know what I mean? When, when it's just, you know, five tiers when, you know, I'll be upgrading to subjugation hopefully really soon. So, yeah, thanks for watching. This was a great episode. Again, join the Discord. That should be in the comments and in the description. Uh, that should be fun, so come hang out. And uh, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, I'd really like to use this armor to start getting into more PVM and stuff. Um, you know, once we get our levels up, maybe, maybe get Sunshine next episode. We'll see if I can get 81 magic. Um, but, yeah, this should open up a lot of content. And uh, a lot of these things are going to be our best armor for probably... Probably a, a, a little while until we get the full subjugation set. So, yeah. It was a really fun episode. I'm having a blast. So, absolutely leave me a sub. And uh, if you'd like to stick, a, stick around and join the Discord and have some fun.